Declaration of Rights in the Florida Constitution and violated Florida Sunshine Law. There are a number of rights that are enumerated under the Florida Constitution's Declaration of Rights, DOR. Generally speaking, the DOR is Florida's equivalent to the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights and most, if not all, of the rights under the DOR are regarded as so important slash fundamental that any regulations on these rights must pass strict scrutiny review, which means that the government has the burden of proving that the regulation is narrowly tailored to achieve a compelling interest, and it is the least restrictive means of achieving that purpose. The right to open government is one rights enumerated under the DOR. Open government means that citizens have the right to remain apprised of actions taken by public officials and conversations in furtherance of those actions. Further, under the Florida Sunshine Law, any meeting between two or more public officials in which the officials discuss their official duties and actions that will affect the public must be noticed to the public, and the public has the right to attend. The word meeting is construed broadly, although public officials are allowed to attend social functions together without running afoul of this, if the officials start discussing their official duties or actions that will affect the public pursuant to their duties, then any decisions made during those conversations will not be considered binding. Charter County Authority a charter county has to the authority to make laws for the health, safety, and welfare of their citizens, provided that the laws are not preempted by Florida state laws. A non-chartered county will only have the authority to create laws pursuant to the authority granted by the Florida legislature. Vague. Every law in Florida must be clear, unambiguous, address a single subject in the title, and not be vague or overbroad. Procedural due process. The Florida Constitution provides the rights of procedural due process consistent with the U.S. Constitution. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. This includes notice and a hearing. Access to courts. All citizens of Florida are entitled to access the courts without denial, sale, or delay. If the law denies access to the courts in some manner, the government must provide a reasonable alternative. If the law does not provide a reasonable alternative, then the government must show that there is a public necessity and no other reasonable means of addressing that necessity. Takings. The Florida Constitution provides an even greater protection than the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Under the Florida Constitution, no person shall be deprived of their property without just compensation and the government may only take their property on a showing of public necessity. Additionally, property cannot be distributed to any private entity after it is taken. This provision of the FL Constitution typically applies to issues of real property and not personal property. Standing. A citizen will have standing to challenge the search and seizure of their property if they have a reasonable expectation of privacy in the thing to be searched or seized. This provision in the FL Constitution is written in conformity with U.S. Constitution for Amendment. Unreasonable Search and Seizure A search or seizure without a warrant is presumptively unreasonable. However, a search may be valid in a vehicle if the officer has probable cause that there is contraband in the vehicle or if there is an exception to the warrant requirement that applies, such as exigent circumstances or plain view doctrine. The vehicle exception provides that a government agent can search a vehicle if they have probable cause that there is contraband in the vehicle. Separation of powers. The Florida Constitution provides that certain powers are delegated to each of the three branches of government, the legislative, judicial, and executive. Florida Constitution and violated Florida's Sunshine Law. There are a number of rights that are enumerated under the Florida Constitution's Declaration of Rights, DOR. Generally speaking, the DOR is Florida's equivalent to the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights and most, if not all, of the rights under the DOR are regarded as so important slash fundamental that any regulations on these rights must pass strict scrutiny review, which means that the government has the burden of proving that the regulation is narrowly tailored to achieve a compelling interest, and it is the least restrictive means of achieving that purpose. The right to open government is one rights enumerated under the DOR. Open government means that citizens have the right to remain apprised of actions taken by public officials and conversations in furtherance of those actions. Further, under the Florida Sunshine Law, any meeting between two or more public officials in which the officials discuss their official duties and actions that will affect the public must be noticed to the public, and the public has the right to attend. The word meeting is construed broadly, although public officials are allowed to attend social functions together without running afoul of this, if the officials start discussing their official duties or actions that will affect the public pursuant to their duties, then any decisions made during those conversations will not be considered binding. Procedural Due Process the Florida Constitution provides that no one shall be deprived of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. Florida's constitutional requirements track those of the federal constitution. John's procedural due process rights were violated. Taking. Government action resulted in a permanent deprivation of John's reasonable expected use of his property. Florida does allow recovery when the government places an inordinate burden on property. Alternatively, damages may be awarded when government action places a burden on the property such that a property owner bears a disproportionate burden such that the public at large should be expected to bear more of that burden. Equal protection. That is, the ordinance treats sex offenders differently than it treats other people. 
Since sex offenders are not members of a protected class, the ordinance will be subjected to rational basis review. The ordinance will be upheld if it is rationally related to a legitimate government objective. Substantive due process. John has a right to life, liberty, property, and privacy, and the government may not deprive a person of these rights without meeting the appropriate test. Here, John's right to privacy, which is specifically provided for under the Florida Constitution as a fundamental right, was likely not violated because sex offenders can validly be required to register with a sex offender registry, and his conviction is a matter of public record. 20 John's liberty right, though, was likely violated. The right to liberty is a fundamental right, and any government regulations or laws or ordinances that infringe upon this right are subject to strict scrutiny. Under strict scrutiny, the burden is on the government to establish that the ordinance is necessary to serve a compelling government interest. The government must establish that the ordinance is the least restrictive means of accomplishing its objective under the circumstances. Excessive bail. The Florida Constitution prohibits setting excessive bail. In fact, everyone jailed for an offense other than a capital or life felony has a right to pretrial release so long as they do not pose a risk of flight or failing to show up for their court date, they do not pose a risk to the judicial process or to the community at large. The bond condition in this ordinance requires a mandatory surety bond of $2,000 times the number of months a person was previously incarcerated, which is excessive. The bond is not related to a person's flight risk or their danger to the community. The bond requirement is also not related to a person's ability to actually post the bond. The bond would therefore result in more indigent and poor people being imprisoned than people who are not indigent or poor. The bond provision would this violate the Florida Constitution as an excessive bond. Ex post facto clause. The ordinance punishes activity that occurred before the ordinance was enacted or before people had a reasonable chance to become aware of the requirements of the ordinance. That is, the ordinance punishes living within a certain distance of a school, with no provision that the ordinance could only be enforced for violations which occurred after the ordinance was enacted. To be properly enacted, legislation must contain a short and simple statement of its purpose, contain only one subject matter, must contain a description of the law that is easy to understand, and must contain enacting language indicated that is enacted by the Florida legislature under the authority of the state of Florida. Similar requirements may be applied to the Board of Commissioners and their ordinances. The ordinance in this case would probably meet basic requirements. Establishment Clause The Florida Constitution provides similar protections as the federal constitution does in this regard. The ordinance will be examined to determine whether it is directed toward religion and has a secular purpose, whether the government is entangled with religion, and whether the ordinance furthers or inhibits religion. Double Jeopardy The Florida Constitution prohibits punishment twice for the same offense. Florida specifically permits punishing someone twice under different crimes if the legislature manifested an intent to provide for separate punishments, so long as the crime does not constitute a lesser included offense, does not have all the same elements, and is not merely a different degree in severity of the same offense. This ordinance punishes sex offenders a second time, after they have been previously convicted of a sex offense, for merely being a sex offender. The former conviction for a sex offense and the latter conviction for a sex offense under this ordinance take place in separate trials, and therefore would be subject to double jeopardy concerns. Additionally, the crimes contain the same elements, the elements of sex offense. However, under the Blockburger test, the ordinance will likely be found to contain an element the sex offense crime does not, living with a certain distance of a school. Bond The judiciary is responsible for setting bond and making the determination of whether someone charged with a criminal offense is entitled to bond pending trial. By setting a mandatory bond in this statute, the city infringed on the judiciary's powers, in violation of the requirement that each body of government, legislative, executive, and judiciary, have separate powers that may not be infringed by the other body. Criminal infraction Commissioners may not establish crimes, crimes may only be declared by the state legislature. Municipalities may legislate that certain things be considered ordinance violations, but they may not be punishable by imprisonment. The fact that John was arrested while walking out of his house also weighs in favor of a finding that the punishment and bond provisions of the ordinance go beyond being merely an ordinance and have in fact legislated the creation of a new crime. Since legislating for whether something is a crime or not is a function of the legislature, this ordinance violated the Florida constitutional requirement that certain powers be exercised only by certain arms of the government. Government Office Florida does not permit someone who is a convicted felon to serve in government office. To be eligible for government office, an individual must not have been convicted of a felony, must be at least 18 years old, must be a resident of Florida, and must not be incompetent. Sunshine Under the Sunshine Laws, all meetings at which public officials discuss public business must be noticed and open to the public. Records of such meetings must also be accessible to the public. The public has a right to government information under the Florida Constitution. There is an exception to the Sunshine Law meeting requirements for unplanned meetings between state legislators. This exception applies to meetings between two state legislators or one state legislator and the governor. Privacy. Sections 1 and 2 implicate the right to privacy. 
Under the Florida Constitution, the right to privacy is expressly protected. This protection has been interpreted as stronger than the federal constitutional right to privacy. People have a right to be left alone and free from unreasonable government intrusion into their lives. Privacy is a fundamental right. Due Process The Florida and federal constitutions guarantee procedural and substantive due process. Procedural due process requires notice and a hearing. Substantive due process When a fundamental right is implicated, strict scrutiny applies. Under strict scrutiny, the government must show that the law is necessary to further a compelling state interest. For all other rights, only rational basis review is required, under which the plaintiff must show that the law is not rationally related to any legitimate government interest. Legitimate government interests under the state's general police powers include providing for the health, safety, welfare, and morals of the people. Strict scrutiny To win under strict scrutiny, the state will need to show that the purpose of the statute is compelling. The purpose is certainly legitimate because it is based on health. Equal protection A law that treats similarly situated people differently implicates equal protection. The only strict scrutiny classifications are race, religion, national origin, and physical disability. This law implicates none of the strict scrutiny categories. Rational basis review would apply. Free speech. This law arguably burdens speech, protected under the FL Constitution. Free speech is a fundamental right. This law, providing additional procedures for tattooing messages on one's body, is arguably a time, place, manner restriction on speech. As such, it must be content neutral and narrowly tailored to a compelling state interest. Impairment of contracts. The state may not interfere with contracts already in place without a good reason. Access to courts. Under the FL Constitution, all people shall have access to the courts for redress of any injury without sale, denial, or delay. No cause of action shall be abolished unless there is an overpowering public necessity and no alternative means of meeting it under the Kluger test. A reasonable alternative must be provided. Due process. In Florida, victims are guaranteed due process rights under the state constitution with regard to the criminal proceedings to which they are a party. These rights include due process rights such as notice of all proceedings, the right to be heard at relevant crucial proceedings, and the right to be present at the proceedings. Homeroom powers. Under homeroom powers, a municipality slash county in FL can enact ordinances relating to the health, safety, welfare, and morals of the people. However, such ordinances must not violate the FL or U.S. constitutions, nor be preempted with the same. The First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, applicable to the states through the 14th, protects the freedom of speech and association and the free movement of ideas through society. Establishment Clause This provision arguably violates Florida's equivalent to the Establishment Clause. The Florida Constitution provides that religion will not be prohibited or regulated, but it also contains a Blaine Amendment providing that no funds shall be taken from the public treasury in aid of any church or sectarian institution. In any event, Florida's Establishment Clause principles are applied much as the Federal Establishment Clause. That means favoring any one particular religion is forbidden but this law does not do this. It therefore is probably best analyzed under the so-called Lemon Test, which Florida courts borrowed from SCOTUS. That test provides that a law does not violate the Establishment Clause so long as it, 1, has a secular purpose, 2, its primary effect is not the advancement or hindrance of religion, and, 3, it will not promote excessive government entanglement with religion. Substantive Due Process The Florida Constitution explicitly guarantees the right to privacy, and so the right to privacy in this state has been taken more serious even than it is taken under the federal constitution, where it is only implicit, seen as an emanation from penumbras. Thus, invasions of the right to privacy must be justified by the government's satisfaction of the strict scrutiny standard, which means that the law must be necessary to achieve a compelling government purpose, such that there is no less restrictive alternative by which the government could achieve that compelling purpose. Taking The Florida Constitution, like the federal one, provides that private property may not be taken for public use without just compensation. The government must be able to justify any such taking with an important interest, but the public use need not be actually making the property available to the public. Instead, it suffices that the public will benefit from the taking. Just compensation reflects the value of the property at its highest and best use. The value is measured by the loss to the owner, not the gain to the taker. And we do not factor in any benefits to the owner as a result of the taking in order to lower the amount received. Procedural Due Process Florida Constitution guarantees the right to acquire property and the right not to be deprived of property without due process of law. Guns are certainly property a legitimate expectation is the is the threshold, and owning something satisfies that. And, this law imposes a flat fee, with no process at all. The amount of required process is measured by determining the, 1, importance of the property interest, 2, the extent to which additional procedure would improve fact-finding, and, 3, the importance of the government interest in efficiency adjudication. Right to keep and bear arms. Like its federal counterpart, the Florida Constitution does protect this right. 
Specifically, it provides that the right of the people to keep and bear arms for self-defense and defense of the lawful authority of the state shall not be infringed. But it adds that the manner of regulating the bearing of arms can be regulated. That sounds bad for this law, arguably, but the 16 courts have interpreted this provision relatively lax in practice. Specifically, they have held that guns commonly used in criminal enterprises can be banned by the legislature, that the legislature has broad authority to regulate with respect to other firearms, while suggesting that the legislature might go too far if it were to ban common firearms. Kluger test. The Florida Constitution guarantees that the courts will be open to all, without sale, denial, or delay. The Florida Supreme Court has developed the Kluger test to determine when that right has been violated. Under the Kluger test, the legislature may not close the courts by abolishing causes of action that otherwise exist unless, 1, it provides a reasonable alternative or, 2, the government can show that the law serves an overriding public need that cannot be met with any other alternative. Sunshine Law Florida Sunshine Law states that all meetings of public officers in the state where the officers are discussing business must be open to the public, the records must be public record, and notice must be provided to the public ahead of time, so they have the opportunity to attend the meeting. There are only a few constitutional exceptions for this rule, and one of them is informal meetings between state legislators where there are fewer than three legislators, or not two legislators and the governor, where the meeting was planned in advance and business was discussed. Other than those exceptions, all types of informal meetings between state officials must be in public and with notice, including if they are informal. Informal meetings between city council members do not fall under the exception here, and only would if they were considered legislators. Fourth Amendment, Search and Seizure The Florida Constitution expressly states that there is a right to privacy, arguably making it even stronger than the U.S. Constitution right to privacy. The Florida Constitution also almost mirrors the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in its rights to be free in one's person, effects, and property. Both the Fourth Amendment and the Florida Constitution give persons the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. A search is reasonable if there is a warrant for the search based on a valid search warrant, which is granted by a neutral magistrate judge based on probable cause. Probable cause for these warrants shows a reasonable belief that evidence of a crime will be discovered, and probable cause is based on a totality of the circumstances test. Any search done without a warrant is deemed unreasonable unless there is an exception. Exceptions include exigent circumstances, automobile searches, search incident to arrest, stop plus frisk, plain view, consent, or hot pursuit. In order for a search to occur, a person must have a reasonable expectation of privacy in regard to the item or place searched. City Ordinance Cities, also known as municipalities, if incorporated, which this one seemingly is, have the right to create ordinances based on police powers and the state in general for the health, safety, welfare, and morals of Floridians. Municipalities and chartered counties can create laws that supplement the general and special laws that the state legislature has created. On the other hand, unchartered counties would not be able to do, so they are limited specifically to those general and special laws. But municipalities can create laws for the police power of protecting their citizens and and will argue that this falls into it because it is specifically to fight crime and reduce juvenile crime and the consequences thereof. Overbroad The first argument that juveniles or any plaintiff with standing might make is that the ordinance is overbroad. An ordinance may not be overbroad in that it encompasses a large amount of activity both constitutional and unconstitutional and does not provide any exceptions or limits to that broad restriction. Equal protection. The juveniles will argue that the ordinance violates equal protection because it is a curfew ordinance only for juveniles. Persons under a specific age, we aren't sure what because the ordinance is vague, are being discriminated against and told they cannot be out in public in the downtown area because of their age. Equal protection applies to protect members of a suspect class in Florida and those suspect classes include race, religion, national origin, and physical disability. Under strict scrutiny, the state must show there is a compelling reason and that the actions are necessary to reach that. All 16 other classifications are under the rational basis test likely because there is no specifically delineated intermediate scrutiny. Under rational basis, the challenger must show that there is no rational basis to achieve a legitimate interest the state has. Plaintiffs under rational basis often lose because there are often legitimate purposes and rational means of attaining them. First Amendment The juveniles might also argue that this violates their First Amendment rights to freedom of speech and association by limiting when they may be outside and doing activity downtown which can be seen as speech. However, and might argue this is simply a time, place, manner restriction. These restrictions on speech must be to achieve an important interest and have narrowly tailored means to achieve that interest, as well as including an alternative avenue of speech. Impairment of Contracts Clause Lastly, the ordinance might be unconstitutional, because the Florida Constitution along with the U.S. Constitution also has an impairment of contracts clause. The state may not impair any existing obligations under current contracts by passing a law that would affect that contract. Private contracts have a lower burden if the state can justify the evil it is trying to remedy, and public contracts have a higher burden, but even so this would affect contracts. Standing to bring a suit 
Florida has conventional standing and it is very similar to federal standing. To have standing, a plaintiff must show one, injury in fact, both a particularized injury to a specific person and a concrete injury where there would be actual injury to the person, two, causation, and three, redressability, which means the result of the suit such as holding the ordinance unconstitutional would prevent the harm. Constitutional officers. There are only a handful of constitutional officers in each county. They include the sheriff, the clerk of the county court, and the property appraiser. These officers of the county, even in a non-charter county, have independent authority granted to them by the Florida Constitution. Any disciplinary issues for individual officers are handled at the state level. For example, the governor is the entity that removes a sheriff. A charter county may enact laws that alter the standard provisions of a non-charter county, like constitutional officers. Sunshine Law Under the Sunshine Law, actions by any governmental entity must be disclosed to the public. Even communications between the county board and the county's lawyer must be disclosed to the public. This includes local boards that are granted governmental authority, as in activities that would normally be associated and reserved for government action like investigations and levying fines. Local Government Encroachment Article 5 spells out the jurisdiction of the courts in Florida. It states that the legislature is not empowered to endow judicial power to the executive beyond levying certain, as in specific, legal fines. The exception is that the legislature can establish a civil traffic infraction quasi-court system. When a governmental entity, a branch of government, takes some authority from what is rightly endowed in another branch, then that is considered encroachment. Encroachment by local government, like administrative entities taking on judicial functions, has been and will be considered unconstitutional. Broward County Mayoral Appointment In local government in which quasi-legal decisions are made, like in traffic fines, it is unconstitutional for the mayor to have an intimate process in the administration. For example, it has been held unconstitutional when a mayor served as the county fines determiner and also was able to allocate that money from the fines. This governmental entwinement between the city slash county's executive and the judicial system will be struck down. Defamation Definition In Florida defamation requires a defamatory statement against an ascertainable specific party, fault of defendant, falsity of the statement, publication, actual damages, and defamatory intent, burden changes depending upon circumstances. Slander is an oral defamatory statement against the party. Florida does not recognize slander per se, which would automatically give damages to any comment impugning the party's profession, trade, chastity of a woman, or horrendous disease, leprosy or venereal. The defamatory statement must be a statement of fact rather than an opinion. A public official, if speaking in her official capacity, has an immunity for statements made. A public person in a public matter must prove that the statement is false and indicates gross negligence on the part of the speaker, or a reckless disregard for the truth or knowledge that the statement is false. Defamation, Newspaper Defamation has the same requirements and definitions as supra. In dealing with media, there are some special rules in Florida. First, before making a defamatory action, the plaintiff must serve a notice to the media outlet five days before filing the action. The media outlet then has ten days within which to publish a retraction if it feels there needs to be one. If the media outlet publishes the retraction, then there is a rebuttable presumption against actual malice. If the outlet does not publish, then there is a rebuttable presumption of actual malice. Actual malice per New York Times v. Sullivan is required for a public person to make a claim against a media outlet. In such a case, the plaintiff must show actual malice, which is shown by the media outlet knowing the claim was false and printing it anyway or with reckless disregard to the veracity of the statement which can be evidenced by knowing that it was substantially certain that the statement was false and considering that fact but publishing the statement anyway. Sunshine Law Under the Sunshine Law, actions by any governmental entity must be disclosed to the public. Even communications between the county board and the county's lawyer must be disclosed to the public. This includes local boards that are granted governmental authority, as in activities that would normally be associated and reserved for government action like investigations and levying fines. Sunshine Law, Secret Meeting The secret meeting amounts to a preliminary injunction against the Sunshine Law. In order to create secret meetings, then the government must achieve the same burden as putting a gag order on court proceedings, there must be an overriding necessity for privacy, there must be no alternative means of accomplishing the goal, and the measure must be narrowly tailored to serve the purpose. This measure, keeping the proceedings in complete secrecy and subpoena powers, hearkens to a grand jury. Grand jury proceedings are secret, but that is constitutionally protected. Boards by the county are not thus endowed. Standing A plaintiff must have standing to sue. Standing requires an injury in fact, causation, and redressability. Sovereign immunity. Florida enacted governmental immunity in accordance with the federal government but is liable for damage to property and people. The government is liable for injuries that are a result of operational duties, but not planning. Taking. Pursuant to its powers of eminent domain, the state and local governments may take, appropriate, or physically invade private property for a justifiable public purpose with just compensation due and owing to the owner of that property. 
eminent domain also covers the taking of personal property. Under Florida constitutional law, there is no requirement for compensation when, through use of eminent domain powers, government destroys an immediate and serious threat to public health, wellness, or safety. Equal protection. Under Florida's equal protection laws, which strongly mirror the U.S. Constitution, no citizen may be deprived the equal protection of the laws. Where a fundamental right is being impinged upon or a ten traditionally suspect class is at issue, race, religion, national origin and, in Florida, physical disability, strict scrutiny analysis applies whereby the government has the burden of proof of showing that its law is narrowly tailored to meet a compelling government interest. Procedural due process. Under the due process provisions in the Florida Constitution, no person will be denied life, liberty, or a property interest by the government without the due process of law which, at a minimum, requires notice and a hearing. The court should balance here, 1, the private interests at stake, 2, the procedural safeguards in place to protect those interests, and 3, the government's interest in efficiency of administration. Substantive due process. Under Florida's constitution, the right to privacy is express and fundamental and, therefore, considered to be stronger than the protections set forth by the U.S. Constitution. Governor powers. The governor has the authority under the Florida constitution to call a special legislative session. Special legislative sessions must be limited in scope, and in the absence of the requisite vote of the members of the House and Senate, two-thirds vote, no new matters may be addressed during a special session, other than those for which the special session was called. FL, Statute Formalities First, the Act includes a short title that sufficiently describes the subject matter of the law. Second, there is an enacting clause. Finally, the purpose for the Act was likely in accordance with the legislature's authority to pass laws for the general welfare, health, safety, and morals of the public, as the purpose of the bill deals with litigation efficiency and raising revenue, though the means by which these purposes are achieved are questionable, as discussed below. However, the Act likely violates the single-subject rule. To comply with the Florida Constitution, a law must cover only one subject. Each component part or aspect of a law must have some natural relation to an overall scheme. Special Law a special law, unlike a general law, is a law that only applies to particular geographic areas in the state. Special laws are permitted, so long as voters in the effective area are given notice of the proposed law and a referendum is held. Additionally, a special law, as well as a general law of local application, which does not require notice and referendum, but applies to certain areas based on a classification scheme such as population, cannot cover certain subject matter that the Florida Constitution expressly prohibits. Such prohibited subject matter includes taxation, elections, petit juries, conditions precedent to bringing civil or criminal claims, venue rules, and rules of evidence. Access to courts. The Florida Constitution provides that the right to access to courts will not be infringed upon and that justice will be administered without sale, denial, or delay. When the legislature significantly burdens this right in a manner that amounts to abolishing a cause of action, a reasonable alternative must be provided unless the legislature can make the difficult showing that a public necessity exists and that no alternative can reasonably be established, Kluger v. White test. Prohibited subject matter. As discussed above, conditions precedent to filing a civil or criminal suit are among those subjects expressly prohibited from special laws and general laws of local application in the text of the Florida Constitution. Requiring residents of one county to post bond before bringing a civil malpractice claim violates this prohibition, as posting bond is a condition precedent to filing a complaint based on the plain language of Section 2. Equal Protection Section 2 also implications equal protection concerns. The Florida Constitution prohibits discrimination against individuals based on race, alienage, gender, religion, and physical handicap. Any discrimination on these bases will be subject to strict scrutiny, compelling interest, plus narrow tailoring. Wealth is not a suspect classification subject to heightened scrutiny. Instead, when legislation draws lines between people based on wealth, the standard of scrutiny applied is rational basis, rational relationship to a legitimate government interest. The Supreme Court of the United States as well as the Florida Supreme Court have both recognized, however, that when discrimination against the poor involves a fundamental right, heightened scrutiny should be applied. Due Process Finally, the Florida Constitution expressly protects the right of both procedural and substantive due process. Substantive due process involves the protection of fundamental rights, and procedural due process protects against unconstitutional deprivations of protected interests without notice and hearing, and protects the right to a fair trial. Infringements of either aspect of due process implicates strict scrutiny review. Taxation. Section 3. Section 3 is also constitutionally invalid because it involves taxation, which is on the list of prohibited subject matter for special laws and general laws of local application laid out in the express text of the Florida Constitution. Additionally, the state is not empowered to collect ad valorem taxes. Search and seizure, slash probable cause. The Florida Constitution protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. 
The Constitution is generally construed in light of the Federal Constitution and expressly provides that citizens' protection is coterminous with the outer limits of the Federal Constitution. A person is protected from government and seizures where she has a reasonable expectation of privacy in the place searched. Generally, a warrant is required for a search, seizure, or arrest, subject to several exceptions. For instance, a warrant for arrest need not be used where a suspect is in public. Even when a suspect is arrested in public, police must have probable cause to arrest. Probable cause is a reasonable and genuine belief that criminal conduct is occurring or has occurred. It requires a reasonable evidentiary basis. If a police officer performs an unreasonable search or seizure, the evidence is subject to the exclusionary rule. Exclusionary rule slash fruits of the poisonous tree. The exclusionary rule prohibits the use of evidence in a criminal proceeding where it is the fruit of an unlawful search or seizure. The fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine prohibits the use not only of the evidence seized, but also any further evidence seized that would not have been seized, but for the unlawful search and seizure. Miranda. Every criminal suspect has the right to remain silent, and the right to be from self-incrimination. Because of these rights, the U.S. Supreme Court decided in Miranda v. Arizona that a suspect must be given certain warnings when in custody and being interrogated. A suspect is in custody when he has a reasonable belief that he is unable to leave the police officer. He is being interrogated if he is asked a question, which a reasonable person would believe was attempting to elicit a response related to the crime. Custody When in custody and subject to interrogation, a suspect must be provided with the warnings that, 1, she has the right to remain silent, 2, anything she says can and will be used against her in a court of law, 3, she has the right to an attorney, and, 4, if she cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint one for her. Waiver Suspects may validly waive their rights under Miranda if the waiver is provided knowingly and voluntarily. Right to attorney. The invocation of the right to counsel in response to Miranda warnings is not offense-specific. This differs from the appointment of counsel under the Sixth Amendment, often at a preliminary hearing. If clearly invoked, police must cease interrogation unless the suspect reinitiates contact and waives his Miranda rights. Generally, statements asking about whether a person should get counsel are not clear invocations of the right. Search incident to arrest. When a suspect is lawfully arrested, an officer may search, incident to that lawful arrest, the suspect's person, and his grabbing area. This does not include trunks or cars, but may include glove compartments if they are within the reach of the suspect. The U.S. Supreme Court recently held in the Arizona case that, despite any question left after New York v. Belton, the search of a suspect's vehicle after he is already placed in the back of the police car is not incident to a lawful arrest. This is because the reasonableness of the search incident to lawful arrest is based upon the need to preserve evidence and the need to protect officers from any weapons a suspect may have on his person or in his grabbing area. Inevitably discovery. When evidence would have been inevitably discovered regardless of any unlawful search, it may still be admitted. Inventory search. Officers may lawfully search vehicles when searching is a typical business practice of the law enforcement unit. Car search. If an officer has probable cause to search a vehicle, he may search any part of the vehicle that may contain evidence of that crime. An officer may not, however, search containers that could not reasonably hold the evidence, such as searching a lunchbox when the officer has probable cause to think the suspect has a bazooka. Automobile exception The automobile exception allows certain limited searches due to the transitory nature of automobiles. Indeed, a person has less expectation of privacy in her vehicle than in her home, due to the transitory nature of vehicles. Similarly, an officer has significant concerns regarding the potential destruction of evidence should a vehicle leave the scene of a potential crime. Substantive dues process the Florida Constitution provides that all natural persons have a right to privacy with respect to their personal life. The right to privacy encompasses a person's health and family where there is an expectation of privacy. Therefore, a person has a right to privacy with respect to their medical records because there is an expectation that those records will remain private absent consent to disclosure. The right to privacy is a fundamental right afforded by the Constitution. Denial of a fundamental right is subject to strict scrutiny, which requires that the government prove that the denial of the right is necessary to achieve an important governmental interest and is narrowly tailored to achieve that important government interest. Procedural due process. Additionally, the Florida Constitution provides that when a person is faced with deprivation of their life, liberty, or property interests, they must be afforded due process of the law, which requires notice and an opportunity to be heard. Sunshine Law. Under the Florida Constitution, the Sunshine Law provides that public bodies are required to make public the records of any meetings between public figures, such as members of the legislature. The law does not apply to private entities. However, when government becomes so intertwined in private activities, the private entity may be held to be a state actor, thus subjecting it to state regulations not applicable to private entities. When the government engages in activities in the private sector, which amount to more than mere planning or administration, then the private entity will be considered a state actor. Generally, the government's mere leasing of property to a private entity is insufficient to result in the entity being regarded as a state actor. Substantive dues process 
In order to be valid, a law must have a legitimate public purpose and must not be overbroad or vague. The stated purpose is to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. States are permitted to use their police power to enact laws for the general purpose of protecting the health, safety, and welfare of their citizens. This police power applies to county and local governments as well. Because the law does not deny or deprive any fundamental rights or discriminate on any level, it is subject to rational basis review, which requires that the opponent of the law prove that the law is not rationally related to a legitimate governmental purpose. The protection of the public health, safety, and welfare is a legitimate governmental purpose and is permitted by its police power. Homestead To qualify as a homestead, the property must be owned by Florida residents, used as the primary residence, be no more than 160 acres of contiguous land if in an unincorporated area or one half acre in an incorporated area. Further, only one residence can qualify as a homestead for any person. Homestead transfer In Florida, to transfer a homestead, the owner's spouse must sign and agree to the transfer. However, a spouse's homestead rights may be waived in a valid postnuptial agreement. For a postnuptial agreement to be valid, it must be in writing, signed by both parties to the marriage, and have been made voluntarily. Also, there is no financial disclosure requirement for postnuptial agreements. In Florida, the homestead protection is transferable, provided the new property meets the requirements of primary residence, owned by Florida residents, and only one property. The homestead protection will not be valued according to the new property at first, but will retain the value for the old house adjusted at a premium rate. However, as the town is likely an incorporated area, the homestead exemption will only apply to one half acre, which would be the entire property. However, when transferring a homestead exemption, the amount exempted will be determined by the value of the new property, not the property being sold. Homestead tax exemption. In Florida, homesteads qualify for tax exemptions of $25,000 initially, plus another $25,000 for non-school ad valorem taxes for value between $50,000 to $75,000. Further, property taxes on a homestead may only be increased by the less of 3% or the consumer price index. Also, it is unconstitutional for the state of Florida to tax property. The only entities that can levy ad valorem taxes are 1. School districts, 2. Counties, 3. Municipalities, and 4. Special taxing districts. Homestead creditors. Generally, homestead property is exempt from any forced sale or judgment lien. However, creditors may force a sale of a homestead if the debt is, 1, a mortgage, 2, a mechanics lien for improvements to the property, or 3, unpaid federal or state taxes. Further, a property will not be protected from forced sale if the homestead protection came into existence after the judgments were entered or in an effort to evade creditors. However, if the creditors obtain executions against John, they may recover from proceeds of his sale. Homestead Termination in Florida, a homestead protection generally terminates on a valid device, sale, or conveyance, but it may continue if the home is devised to the testator's spouse or children. Further, an organization or corporation may not benefit from any homestead protection, it is only for natural persons. Generally, a surviving spouse is granted a life estate in a homestead, with a vested remainder in fee simple, in any minor children. Also, the rule against perpetuities does not apply to life estates and vested remainders. Vested remainders are remainders which have ascertainable grantees or must vest within a certain amount of time. Homestead Under the Florida Constitution natural persons who own Florida property and make it their primary residence are entitled to homestead exemption on one half acre of land inside municipalities and up to 160 contiguous acres of property outside the municipality. The homestead protection is for land and property owned by the parties, it may include apartment and condominiums, but a mobile home as in this example may not carry the permanency of the land required for homestead since a mobile home could be readily mobile. Under homestead, a homestead property automatically inures to the family of the deceased regardless of a will or other bequest provision to the contrary and regardless of whose name the property is titled under. If there is a surviving spouse and surviving minor children, the property passes to the spouse as a life estate and to the children upon the death of that spouse. Homestead Exemption In order to qualify for homestead exemption, the party must own and make the homestead property their primary residence and should claim the property as homestead before the creditors lien attaches to it. Equitable Redemption Wanda has a right before judgment on foreclosure is rendered to pay all back dues on the land and bring it current before the extreme measure of foreclosure is rendered. This is called equitable redemption. Homestead The overriding issue in the ejectment action and the foreclosure action is Florida's constitutional homestead provisions. Homestead is defined as up to one half acre of land in a municipality and up to 160 contiguous acres of land outside a municipality. The Florida Constitution expressly gives rights to spouses and minor children under the homestead provisions, and the provisions are designed for the protection of spouses and minor children. A person may only have one homestead and must establish the homestead by showing the home is the primary residence, voter registration, etc. A homestead property, even if owned solely in one spouse's name, may not be conveyed or devised away from the other spouse or the spouse's minor children. Any conveyance of an interest in the homestead property must be consented to by both spouses. 
If it is not, the conveyance is void. Equal protection. As a class of people being treated differently, wealthy people do not fall under the categories of protection requiring strict scrutiny, discrimination based on sex, religion, ethical or race backgrounds or disability, therefore under both the U.S. and Florida constitutions a class based on wealth would be subject to the rational basis test. It is the goal of the law rationally related to any legitimate government purpose and the burden is on the plaintiff wife in this case, to prove otherwise. Separation of power. The FL Constitution provides that the three branches, legislative, judicial, and executive each have their separate and specific functions and cannot be directed, encroached on or interfered with by one or both of another branch of government without specific authority designated in the FL Constitution. This is similar to the separation of powers under the U.S. Constitution, but more specific and stringent in many regards especially in the realm of executive branch encroachment on the judicial branch as it appears to be the case here. The governor, as part of the executive branch under this law would be encroaching on the judicial branch's area of responsibility under the FL Constitution by becoming the appeal agency from the circuit court. Under the FL Constitution, the district courts of appeal have specific jurisdiction for appeals of circuit court judgments. The legislative branch has police powers to make law but cannot pass legislation to become law that would require any branch to encroach on another branch for their duties set forth in the FL Constitution. Homestead in FL, a natural person can have one homestead in FL, must be their principal place of abode. If this house is in fact homestead property, then it is subject to restrictions on alienation, although protected from most creditors. If a decedent is survived by a spouse or minor children, they cannot freely devise the property, except if antenuptial or similar agreement to devise away from spouse. Spending power The city may spend or act for the general welfare of its residents, which includes passing regulations that promote the health and safety of its citizens. Ad valorem taxes Normally all municipality property is exempt from ad valorem taxes. However, when deciding if the municipality property is exempt from ad valorem taxes, you must look to the government purpose v. commercial purpose test. If the land is being used for a private purpose it is not exempt from ad valorem taxes, on the other hand if the property is being used for a government purpose it will be exempt from paying these taxes. Membership right. In Florida, the right to work is an enumerated right in the Florida Constitution. These rights are looked upon as fundamental rights. In Florida, one may not be granted or denied work based on their membership or non-membership to a union. Florida Government Bonds In Florida, there are two types of bonds that may be issued in order to finance government projects. General obligation bonds are bonds that repayment is guaranteed by the full faith of the government. In order to pass a general obligation bond there must be a referendum by the people on whether it may issue. Things such as schools and bridges require no such vote. Revenue bonds are bonds that are paid back from the revenue that the project generates. Municipalities may issue a bond without a vote if it matures within one year. General laws slash special laws. In order for the legislature to pass a law, it must be passed in a legislative session. Laws must have a title that gives notice and is not confusing, contain a single subject, and must contain an enabling clause that reads, be it enacted by the legislature of the state of Florida. General laws are laws that cover everyone in the state even-handedly and only require passage of the Florida legislature. A special law is one that applies to only a certain person or groups of persons, or a certain geographic area such as a city. Special laws require either notice before the passing or a referendum after the passing or the law will have no effect. General laws of application are laws that are general laws that apply uniformly to an area such as one that has a minimum or maximum population requirement. Homestead Under the FL Constitution, a homestead property is a natural person's primary residence in FL. It may be up to 160 continuous acres outside of a municipality, or half an acre in a municipality. Homestead property is protected from judgments of creditors except for mortgages, taxes, and home improvement liens. There are restrictions on the devise of homestead property if the deceased is survived by a spouse and or minor child. Jurisdiction The Florida Constitution gives the Florida Supreme Court the discretionary jurisdiction to hear appeals from the District Courts of Appeal for a variety of reasons, including if two DCA opinions conflict, if they are certified to the Florida Supreme Court as of great importance, or if they affirm the validity of a Florida statute or constitutional provision. The Florida Supreme Court has mandatory jurisdiction of appeals arising out of the District Courts of Appeal relating to bond validation proceedings, imposition of the death penalty, and the invalidation of a statute or constitutional provision. Clause 1, providing for Florida Supreme Court jurisdiction of a DCA case affirming a final judgment exceeding $1 million based on jury verdict, does not fit within the Florida Supreme Court's area of discretionary jurisdiction, unless the case, as stated above, conflicts with another DCA or is certified to the Florida Supreme Court as of great public importance. The Florida legislature may not extend or enlarge the discretionary jurisdiction of the Florida Supreme Court as constitutionally mandated. This clause is unconstitutional, because it attempts to do so. In contrast, under the federal constitution, Congress has the power to enlarge or reduce the appellate jurisdiction of the U.S. 
Supreme Court, provided that it does so without excluding appellate jurisdiction of an entire subject of review. However, the district courts are vested with the power to hear appeals from their own districts, and one district court of appeal cannot be vested with the power to hear appeals from anywhere in Florida. Government Powers Normally, the legislature passes a bill by a majority of each house, and then presents such a bill to the governor to either veto or to sign. Under the Florida Constitution however, the Florida Supreme Court has the exclusive authority to create rules of procedure for the Florida courts. The legislature may reject such rules created by the Florida Supreme Court by a two-thirds vote, but the legislature may not amend or modify such rules. The Florida legislature has no power to create rules of court procedure, as this power is exclusively vested in the Florida Supreme Court according to the Florida Constitution. This clause attempts to give the governor the power to veto or accept such rules of court, according to the procedure for enacting other bills in the legislature. This is clearly unconstitutional, because it violates separation of powers. The Florida legislature cannot delegate its power to reject the Supreme Court's rules by two-thirds vote to the governor. The Florida Constitution expressly provides for this procedure. Any attempt by the governor to veto the Florida Supreme Court's rules would violate this constitutional provision. Hearing The legislature may not deny access to the courts without providing a reasonable alternative unless it can justify such an action with a compelling governmental interest and show that such action is narrowly tailored to fit that interest. An administrative hearing may be considered a reasonable alternative because it still allows plaintiffs to bring their actions before a quasi-judicial officer, and the law allows that any final order may be appealed. However, an administrative hearing may not be seen as a reasonable alternative, as would perhaps an arbitration or mediation type of alternative. Right to jury in addition, a jury trial must be provided in all criminal cases and all civil cases where such a jury trial right existed at the time of the Florida Constitution's adoption. Single Subject The Florida Constitution requires that all statutes enacted by the legislature contain only one subject. The single subject rule exists to provide notice and assure that each title adequately describes what is contained within the statute. Access to Courts The Florida Constitution declares that access to the judicial courts is to be available for every person to address all legal wrongs. The Kruger Court held that access to the courts may be limited if 1. There is a compelling public necessity, and 2. Other reasonable means of redress are available. Additionally, alternative means of redress remain as the mediation is non-binding, therefore allowing potential plaintiffs to still access the court system following mediation. Contract Clause The Florida Constitution also states that a citizen's right to contract should not be infringed upon, especially with respect to contracts already in existence. A Bill of Attainder a bill of attainder is legislation that attempts to impose a punishment on someone without the benefit of a judicial determination. Right to jury trial All Florida citizens are guaranteed the right to a jury trial by the Constitution. Separation of powers Per the Constitution, one branch cannot meddle in the other branch's affairs. The legislature is to make the laws, and the judiciary is to interpret and uphold the laws. Equal protection the Constitution provides that the state cannot take life, liberty, or property without due process and equal protection of the law. This clause discriminates against indigent defendants. General laws slash special laws. General laws apply to the entire state, to all people. Special laws apply only to specific persons and places. General laws can be of local application if they apply to the whole state but are limited by population. Equal protection. The Equal Protection Clause states that the government cannot deprive a person of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. There are two tests for equal protection in Florida, strict scrutiny and minimal scrutiny, rational relation. Florida does not apply intermediate scrutiny. Strict scrutiny applies to suspect classes and fundamental rights. The rational basis test states that the act must be rationally related to a legitimate government purpose. Commerce Clause Under the Commerce Clause, laws may not discriminate against or unduly burden interstate commerce. Dues process. There are two types of due process, substantive and procedural. Substantive requires that laws are fair. Procedural requires a notice and hearing if a personal life, liberty, or property is to be infringed upon. To test substantive due process, the court would utilize the rational basis test. Establishment clause. State action that deals in some way in religion must have a primarily secular purpose, its overall purpose or effect must be neither to inhibit or advance religion, and it must not create an excessive entanglement between religion and government. The U.S. Supreme Court has allowed this indirect government money expenditures to religious institutions or people. The Florida Supreme Court prohibited the state's money from going to religious institutions either directly or indirectly. Vague slash overbroad. A policy or regulation should be clear enough on its face to put a reasonable person on notice of what is covered. Substantive due process. First, it should be noted that Florida's constitution, unlike the federal constitution, contains an express right to privacy. 
Given this, at times the Florida Supreme Court has interpreted Florida's right to privacy as broader than the federal right. Fourth Amendment Search Florida's protection against unreasonable government search and seizures has been interpreted to coincide with the federal interpretation of the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. A person with a reasonable expectation of privacy shall not be searched without a warrant, subject to exceptions, and evidence seized in violation of this right shall be excluded from criminal proceedings against the person. Sovereign Immunity the municipality retains a sovereign immunity similar to the state in that its discretionary functions are protected, deciding whether or not to erect a bridge for the public good, while its ministerial or operational activities generally are not, failure to replace rotten planks on the bridge, exposing citizens to harm. In Florida, sovereign immunity has been waived to the extent of $100,000 per person and $200,000 per incident. If the municipality has taken out liability insurance, it will be responsible up to the amount of coverage, an amount up to which the city has been said to have waived its immunity. Taking. When the government institutes a regulation that has the effect of a total deprivation of the value of a citizen's property, then the citizen has a claim to the reasonable fair market value of his property, which is seen as having been taken and necessitating compensation under due process and the Constitution, both Florida and federal, Fifth Amendment right to life, liberty, and property applied to the states through the Fourteenth Amendment and requiring fair notice and a hearing prior to the deprivation of these privileges.